Hey folks, welcome to BlizzBuzz episode 3, Dragons and Lizards and Warlords, oh my. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about uh, the last stage of Curse of Naxxramas. We're going to be talking about the Diablo uh, Tavern Talk for the patch that launched today. That's patch 210. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the unfortunate DDoS attack. And uh, we're going to close it out with some Warlords of Draenor beta uh, gameplay. Blizz Buzz is a production of AnonymousGeek.com. Hey, so uh, this last week uh, marked the end of Curse of Naxxramas with the final two bosses being Sephiroth and Kel'Thuzad himself. Uh, I've got some footage, and we're going to play that in just a second. Uh, Sephiroth really wasn't that big of a challenge to me. Um, Kel'Thuzad, major challenge. So definitely going to show you just how things and the mechanics start out with these guys, um, especially Kel'Thuzad, because uh, at a certain point in the game, he switches things up and changes his hero power on you, so... It gets a little tricky. Um, since we've got such a, a, a meaty episode, let's go ahead and take a look at that. My massive frost worm awaits! Dress warm. Look at that little gnome. He used to be an interloper like yourself. This next fight will not be easy. I hear the boss is all powerful and very handsome. We finally meet. You asked for it. I most certainly did not. You barged into my floating necropolis. Job's done.
my minions. Some still fight me. Still fight me. All right, so see what I was talking about? Um, Kel'Thuzad's a, a tricky, tricky guy. Um, I also want to go ahead and show off um, from the week before last, um, when you finished the Construct Quarter, um, you got a couple different cards, and you've seen that when, when one died, if the other had died previously that game, you would summon Thaddeus. Well, I rigged a deck and played a few games against the... Uh, the innkeeper and actually have some some footage of Thaddeus being summoned so you can actually take a look at this uh, this really cool 11 11 minion All right, so um, it's 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 kind of cool. Um, he's definitely if you can if you can work things to get that out. I mean, it's definitely be a, a great a great thing to pull out. You know, especially at the end game, especially if you could do it mid game because it might push things to the end game really really fast. Um, next, we're going to talk about um, Diablo Three Reaper Souls Patch Two One Zero. Um, that's the patch that launched today and is a major game changer. Well. Last Thursday, uh, Diablo had a special tavern talk, and patch 2.1.0 was the big uh, the big discussion. So let's go ahead, and I've I've got some footage from that, and then we'll um, we'll talk about the uh, the last two subjects. Legendary gems are new gems that are going to 2.1. You okay. find them in Greater Rifts. Uh, they're pretty common, so you should be able to find all the ones that you want. Uh, pretty quickly. There are 14 different ones. They drop, however, at rank zero. So the idea is, while you do greater rifts, you level them up. Mm -hmm. At rank 25, they unlock second synergistic power. Um, and these gems should be more than powerful enough when ranked up properly for you to equip them in your gear. Awesome. That's really cool. Um, out of all of the gems that you've worked on so far, which one's your favorite? My favorite is by far is a Stone of Vengeance, and the reason is there's a lot of interesting gameplay with the gem. So the way the gem works is you deal more damage to anything the farther you're away from it. Mm -hmm. So I play, for, for example, when I play Demon Hunter, mm -hmm. I have to micromanage my sentries and my cluster arrow. I have to make sure I'm shooting from the farthest spot while moving in the direction that the rift is progressing yeah. to maximize my damage and get through the rift at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, it just reinforces a lot of interesting gameplay. That's really cool. What about you, Wyatt? Is there one? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about uh, simplicity strength. Mm -hmm. um, there's always been this uh, tension from a design standpoint between your generator skills and your spender skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally the player, we, we made a lot of the spenders really juicy. It's funny, uh, pr before um, uh, Reaper of Souls, sometimes it wasn't clear which one you did. And, mm -hmm. and now people are at, at points where they just spend massive amounts of resource and they dump out either your cluster arrows or your lashing tail kicks or, or you know, what have you. And, and that's great. You know, yeah. I love that people are able to do that. But uh, finding ways Sometimes subtle ways that are dependent on gear to to buff some of those generators is great, and uh, Simplicity Strength does a great job of that. Oh, for those who don't know, uh, it basically increases the damage of your generator skills, mm -hmm. and when it reaches rank 25, it also causes them to heal you for two percent of your maximum life every time you use a generator. Very cool. And you know, since I'm uh, going to be playing a, a, a hardcore monk, I'll probably try to rank up a Simplicity Strength and combo it with uh, some Depth Diggers or something. Nice. Oh, uh, for me, it's that's a tough one. I think uh, I like Mirne the best. Um, for those of you that know, that don't know, um, it smites pure, uh, every uh, chance on hit. It smites a nearby target for a bunch of damage, mm -hmm. and the damage is substantial. I love it, and it's just really satisfying to have the smite finish off an enemy and just see it explode. It's, it just feels <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Um, so, how <laughs> cool is the vault, and it, what do you love about it? I, I think it's super cool. Um, I hope that everyone gets a chance to see it. Uh, for those who don't know, it, it has to do with um, uh, the treasure goblins. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, kill a treasure goblin, there's a chance, it's a small chance, but, awesome. but there's a chance that you actually uh, get to f open up a portal to go into the realm of greed. And that 
Um, basically, you know, it, it comes from this idea of, of every time a treasure goblin gets away and jumps into a portal, right. where does it go? Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he said, you know what? We, we've got to we've got to put some, some something in for that. Um, so I'm I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. Uh, I, have, I haven't gotten a chance to check it out myself yet. Um, oh, wow. I just haven't had that. Lucky strike on the PTR. Maybe maybe I'll try this afternoon. And see if so I yeah, there. you'll get there soon. Yeah. Yeah. And and don't worry. I mean, it's not designed to be a hard area. Like we <laughs> didn't want to say, oh, you know, you have this rare chance to get into this realm, and then we're gonna kill you. It's like that's <laughs> like that's not. Good. It's more of a celebration event. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you go in, you're just excited. Gold is raining from the sky, yeah. literally. You know, there's just <laughs> it's, there's gold everywhere, everywhere treasure, mm -hmm. and we just want it to be this like fun run around. Yeah. The, the boss has mechanics that are focused on being interesting more than deadly. Mm -hmm. um, so because there's a little, little twinge of, of humor, um, you know, yeah. on, on on the you know it's it, it, it's a little different, and uh, uh, we just want people to to enjoy it, mm -hmm. um, not struggle with mm -hmm. it. I am so glad to have that question. <laughs> no, <laughs> it is, should be viable for everyone. You know, as we mentioned during uh, in the intro, uh, Greater Rift Keys, the Key of Trials drops for anybody who can clear Torment 1 or higher. Mm -hmm. If you can do Torment 1, you can do Greater Rifts. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Key of Trials is designed to try and get you at a good starting rift. So if you can clear Torment 6, without too much effort, maybe the Key of Trials starts you off at Rift 30, 35. Mm -hmm. If you can clear uh, only Torment 1 and it's kind of a struggle, it's probably going to put you at Greater Rift 12 or 15. I mean, it's hard to say for sure. Yeah. Um, and then the Legendary Gems drop for anyone who can clear the Rift. And you don't have to clear it within 15 minutes to get the reward. You only need to clear it within 15 minutes to go to the next higher tier. tier right. You'll still get your gems. You'll still be able to upgrade them. In fact, some people might say, that people who are in uh, Torment 1 gear mm -hmm. uh, might have the most to gain from these legendary gems because their gear isn't totally tricked out and these gems do represent a very large amount of power. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I want to say is absolutely we have talked <laughs> about yeah, this yeah. so much. <laughs> I think maybe once a week. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah it comes up all the time. Uh, you want to chime in? Let's start. Oh, um, you know, I... I I th okay, so the main problem for me with crit versus crit hit damage is their interaction with each other. Um, I mean, there's a lot of problems, but one of them is that all by itself, crit is not that bad. And all by itself, crit damage, if your crit rate was always 5%, crit damage would not be that bad. But it's the fact that they come as a pair, mm -hmm. and the more you get of one, the more valuable the other one becomes. Right. That's that's what I see as a problem, and that's because it, it ends up taking two slots on your gear. Mm -hmm. So whereas cooldown reduction I might take, and it might have some loose synergies with other skills, crit and crit hit damage you really end up stacking together. together. Um, some of the changes that we made, like with legendary gems, mm -hmm. you know, socketing into your rings and amulets, that is a, a deliberate attempt to try and put a little bit more tension on your rings and amulets. Mm -hmm. I know it can be frustrating when you're trying to say, yeah, but I want all the things that are on my rings and I mean, and I want the extra power. But we're, we are actually long term trying to figure out how can we break that pairing, mm -hmm. um, but not do it in a way, like I said, we don't want to come in and just change everyone's gear. Right. We have to find ways going forward to transition people away from crit and crit hit damage in a way that feels good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we do it when we get away with it. When we transition from uh, pre-ROS to ROS, for example, if you remember Scorn rolled 200% right. crit damage, yeah. and so did other two-handers, uh, we made sure weapons did not roll crit damage generally, except for a few legendaries. Right. Uh, and we could get away with that, because you're not going to use a level 60 weapon, because the DPS difference is 2,000, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to use a level 70 weapon. Uh, we couldn't get away with that on amulets, rings, and gloves, mm -hmm. because you could very viably use a level 60 amulet if we had said, Crit damage no longer rolls on level 70 amulets. You would just use level 61 forever. Yeah, right. we actually went through every item slot where crit damage occurred mm -hmm. and said, okay, can we just take it off yeah. in ROS? And the only slot that we was, could take it off was weapons. Was on weapons. Taking right. it off, uh, we did actually internally, we took it off of amulets and rings for a while, mm -hmm. and there were tons of people who hit level 70, and they said, well, I'm still using my level yeah. 60 rings. I didn't find a single ring that was better the whole time leveling up because my level 60 ring had crit and crit damage. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're like having the amount of crit damage that Emeralds provides on weapons is also not a great solution because it causes you to log in and 
be less powerful than yesterday. Yeah. Right. There was another uh, idea that we had discussed for a while, um, got a little bit of traction, but we decided not to go with it, was to not roll crit damage during seasons. Okay, so a um, lot of exciting things. I've been waiting specifically for this patch to get back into Diablo 3. Um, not that I don't love all of these games and play them all the time anyways, but I've been holding back on Diablo specifically for this because I knew it was going to change so many things, and I didn't want to get really worn down by playing it beforehand because I really got burned out really hard before Reaper of Souls came out. I, uh, I had played probably... 10 hours a day uh, for about a week and a half before Reaper of Souls came out to get myself to max level again because I had pretty much just stopped after I beat the campaign. Um, adventure mode didn't exist really um, at that point. And when they unleashed the patch, I thought, oh, that's really neat. I'll get back into it. But no, I got into playing some more World of Warcraft and then Hearthstone came out and I played Hearthstone very heavily um, during beta testing and then very healthy at launch. And then even now with Curse of Naxxramas, I've been playing uh, really heavy, even though it's it's been trailing off. So it's World of Warcraft time and Hearthstone time started to clash, and I got back into to World of Warcraft to, to get some, some great raid gear. And uh, now I'll probably actually swing more into uh, Diablo 3 again, and I'm looking forward to it. Some of the changes are going to be amazing. Um, let's talk about the unfortunate thing that happened over this weekend. Um, a the DDoS attack by Lizard Squad. Um, I'm not really going to make too much commentary on that. Um, if you don't know what a DDoS attack is, it's a distributed denial of service attack. It's basically you're 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 pinging. Uh, several people are, are pinging all at once the servers, so they're they're just kind of hitting the servers really hard. And unfortunately, it this was very malicious in its nature and its intentions against the company and other game companies. Um, the PlayStation Network was was the main original target for this attack. And I guess just maybe a, a splinter group decided, hey, let's go after Blizzard 2. Um, they don't really hurt the companies in this. The companies go through and they, they tweak some settings. They talk to their internet service providers. You know, Maybe they, they change some, some numbers for the lines and stuff. But uh, the people that really get hurt are the gamers because that's gamers that have already paid for a game and now aren't getting to play it. Um, unfortunately, the political agenda behind the attack, I think, is not really going to be acknowledged by the general public or the gaming um, community at all. Um, so that's just pretty much where we'll leave that. Um, it was, it, it is what it is. Um, and luckily, it is in the past. Uh, looks like Blizzard's almost fully recovered from it. Um, they're not having any more issues. PlayStation Network, however, has been having some issues still. They have really been focused on those guys, um, which hurts me when I try and watch Amazon Instant Videos to my PlayStation 3. But rolling on, uh, we'll talk about Warlords of Draenor. I finally got a, my hands on a beta key and started playing. Um, the general chat discussion that was going on for everyone that had come back in on this iteration of the, uh, the Warlords beta was that this one was actually more buggy than the previous um, patch so be warned there are some things where there are objects you cannot see unless you rotate the camera around in wonky angles and you're standing behind it and then you can see it and moving the it's just it was really complicated um i didn't really experience that when i did the beta test uh for mist of pandaria um, and it was around the same time, so I'm, I'm hoping that it's just so much more features and so many people hitting those those beta servers at once to try and actually stress the game and point out all the obvious flaws and stuff. So hopefully we'll have a really well-polished game come this November. But uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at that footage and roll it right now.
through. <laughs> Use whatever means are necessary, champion. Azeroth's final hope lies with you. This slaver and torture knows nothing of honor. Hmm. You have entered my arena, strangers. You will either leave it as victors... <laughs> ...or as corpses. Now, kill your hundred. Or die trying. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I am pleased! I could watch you rats fight for hours! <laughs> Sorry, but we don't have that kind of time. Everyone, with me! <laughs> I only counted 99 kills, wizard. Then I guess we owe you one. After them! Don't let them get away! Quickly! Into the cave before they thaw! So like I said, uh, footage kind of buggy. Um, uh, like I said, objects not there, or objects there but almost invisible. So it gets really tricky to... to to play around and, and I'm going to keep working at it and trudging through it um, but also trying to remember that I do need to go back over to my you know my real account and my real tune and actually you know play and grind some there because I am trying to complete uh, one of the, the the last tier raid set so um, that's all we've got for this week um, join us again next week and until then job's done Jaina versus Instructor Rasuvius! Malfurion versus Gothic the Harvester! J Smartphone from anywhere in the world. I probably lost you at Programmable. Well, this is completely different than your normal programmable thermostat or programmable anything. <laughs> Most of those require you to read a manual to get those to work. And the installation? Less than 5 minutes, honestly. The app that you use to control it is a piece of cake too. You create an account, you log in, and you can control this from anywhere.